Well, hi, everybody. It's David George Brook, that gratitude guy with another guest on my gratitude podcast interview, the pandemic. And as I was thinking about my next guest, it's just still shocking to me that uh, I've known him 30 years. It seems like I just met him and we're both so young, so I just can't, don't know what happened. But I, I, I had hair. I had, I still have my hair there. Yeah, that's that's true. I cannot argue with that statement. Anyway, Mark Caton out of San Diego, California. Mark, welcome to the podcast. Hey, thanks, David. Appreciate being on. You bet. You bet. So I've asked people, I'm asking people several questions to get just sort of a flavor of how they're dealing with what we're dealing with right now. So as you think about it right now, what is your best coping mechanism uh, in dealing with this pandemic? That's a great question. Um, well, I have two sons, and they are 17 and 19. And we've been cooped up together now for pretty much three weeks. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's, and I, I, this must sound like a setup, but it's the attitude of gratitude. Mm. Um, we have dinner together every night by ourselves no television, no cell phones, nice. in which we spend 45 minutes talking about what we did today and what we can do tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So how are we not hurting people and how can we help people? Right, that's so good. That's kind, of, that's kind of where, how my, my coronavirus, uh, pressure cooker relief valve looks like. I like that. And I think a lot of people are talking more and more now about the silver lining that's coming out of this. And you can't appreciate up until you've seen down and we're seeing levels of down like maybe never before in our life. And so the comeback of the family dinner, I think I talked to you yesterday and we were talking, I was right around dinner and I was thinking, wow, what a great thing. When you and I grew up, it was just a normal thing. You sat around the table and we talked about our days and there was no cell phones or no TV or anything too. So uh, there's going to be some real, this is tough to say the least, but there's going to be some real positives that come out of this. And we so, played, we played cards last night for the oh, first nice. time, I think in their lives, really we sat, we sat down and I introduced them to a card game and we played for about an hour. Um, I don't know if they'll keep it up. Uh, the computer is a much more exciting adventure for them, but uh, just some coping mechanisms we use to try That's to stay cool. sane. In fact, I saw an advertisement on the TV the other day for the game of Monopoly from Hasbro or whatever. I was like, yeah. man, that's still hanging on after all these years and video games and things. So sometimes the, what is old is, can sometimes be new as well. So clearly these are uncertain times. And whether it was now or before, what would you say you're most grateful for? My family. Mm -hmm. Without a doubt. Um, yeah. I have a very supportive family. Um, I think in times like this, it's important to have supportive friends secondarily, mm -hmm. family first. My daughter has been, because of my young age, she's been out shopping for me. Oh, nice. Uh, so I don't have to go out into supermarkets and so forth. Mm -hmm. So that kind of support you can't buy, or maybe you can, Amazon, I'm not sure. Uh, but she does my shopping for me. And then uh, the boys have picked up a lot of the normal house chores that they wouldn't have done because they were off to school. Yeah, excellent, excellent. And I look at somebody like you who's always been on the go, doing a ton of things, cramming a bunch of stuff into one day, juggling a lot of balls, That's everyone everyone. to talk about it. So what, what thought or idea or tip might you have for somebody who is housebound and not used to it in terms of things to do while they're kind of sheltering in place? Well, I think number one is that we can always find things to do, but mm -hmm. they're typically things that are things we do all the time. Uh, we clean, we shop, we do laundry. You know, those are the household chores that we, we do. I think it's the, the, we have got an interesting thing here because we can't control what's going on. Right. Uh, we don't have any control over it. Uh, we're at the effect. Um, Hopefully, the people who view this are abiding by the, you know, the stay-at-home orders. I know mm -hmm. in Washington, for example, where you are, 
uh, one of the first in the country to to issue such an order. Right. Uh, if you listen to the scientists, uh, that's what we need to do. But I think we need to take time out to take care of ourselves. Yeah. Uh, pick out an hour. I don't know. Whatever you can carve out your house cleaning schedule and watch a movie on Netflix or re I haven't. I've started to go through magazines that I have not, that are probably three feet high that I haven't looked at, you know, in a year. Yeah. That's um, so I love that piece. I, I love that piece. It's sort of cut out for me that I can take care of myself. Take care of yourself. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. I've, I've noticed too, some of the things that were way down the to-do list are now getting done because it was just never quite that important, but now you're at home you might as well get it handled or like oh, you yeah. said, that, that stack of magazines is a good example too. Yeah. It's, it's, it's amazing how far the list goes and you just never get to it because you're always too busy or you're off on another speaking engagement or I'm off doing something. And uh, so it just sits there. So there are some things like backing up my computer. Holy yeah, mackerel. Oh, yeah. yeah. Changing, changing some passwords, updating some things that I haven't done in years. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. So, so last question, does Mark Caton have a quote or a philosophy or, or sort, sort of a mindset that you've practiced that you use kind of as your mantra, if you will, throughout your life and, and maybe as importantly as ever right now? Would you repeat the question? So do you have sort of like either a quote that you could use or a, a sort of a life philosophy, if you will, that is that uh, you know, a lot of people say, well, this too shall pass, or they'll have something that they might use that kind of has, has sustained you through tough times like this? Hmm. Nothing that pops out immediately. I mean, the first thing that comes to your mind typically is the first thing that comes to your mind. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, when I'm out walking with my sons, it's treat others as you wish to be treated. The mm, proverbial that. golden rule. Um, yeah. I think if we all, treat others in this could be a horrible event. It's a bad event now, but it could wow. get substantially worse. Um, and always remember cash is king. Yeah, that's true. So, so, you know, protect yourself, but treat others as you'd wish to be treated. And I think as, as fathers to three kids for you and two kids for me and a couple of sons each is that uh, you'd mentioned that earlier on a conversation we had about cash is king, but those are such great lessons that something like this maybe reminds us that we want to pass on to them that are the flexibility or, or the conservative nature, whatever you want to call it during a time of need. Uh, I talked to somebody earlier was talking about the boy scout thing, be prepared. And they were talking about how much food they had and I was kid you of course about Costco, but it, there's a lot to be said for being prepared. You know, the other thing is I asked my children at the dinner table one night earlier this week what is it that you want to ask me mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. are the things that you haven't asked me before about mm -hmm. my life or things you are curious about I like um, that. as we get older i want to pass on so that they have in their memory um, a good picture of what i can re recollect myself mm -hmm. uh, and a good picture of who I was as a person. Yeah, that's a good point. And that's one of those things that you just don't think about it in this go-go world. What do you want to ask me? And you and I, as the parents, aren't going to be around forever and they're going to be here long after we've gone. But gosh, when somebody's gone, you can't ask them that question. So Correct. That's, a, that's a great reminder. I like that. That's really good. That's really good. Well, thank you, my friend. I so appreciate those comments and tidbits and thoughts and ideas and so forth. And uh, you and I will chat soon, but thank you so much for being on the podcast. Thank you for inviting me. You bet. Bye.